Here's an example of an ellipsoid. So you know it's an ellipsoid because no matter which variable you freeze, if you freeze x, you've got y squared and z squared. That's going to make an ellipse. If you freeze y as a constant, then you'll have x squared plus z squared equals a constant. That's another ellipse. If you freeze z, then you're going to have x squared plus y squared equals a constant. That's going to be an ellipse as well. So no matter how you slice this thing, you're seeing ellipses. Therefore, it's an ellipsoid. All right, so we have this ellipsoid. I'm trying to think about how to parameterize it. Now, one thing I notice is that um, this ellipse is kind of stretched in the y direction, right? But it has the same value, the same number under x squared as under z squared. So that means it's going to have a, a symmetry around the y axis. So if we just maybe draw a quick sketch of what this ellipse must look like, here's x, y and z. Um, so let's see, if we, if we set y equal to 0, we see a circle of radius 1 there, right? But if, if we set x equal to 0, we have an ellipse that is in the y, z plane, right? but it's stretched so that it's twice as long in the y direction. Or if we set z equal to 0, we have kind of an ellipse that's kind of stretched again, stretched in the y direction. So, But it still has symmetry around the y axis. Now, if it's had symmetry around the z-axis, um, then we could just use cylindrical coordinates, right? So um, what we could think of is, what if we just change the names of the axes? So for now, let's, um, let's, let, uh, let's let y be z and z be y. So now it has symmetry around the z-axis, right? Because I just changed the names of the corresponding axes. So now that it has symmetry around the z-axis, I could use cylindrical to find uh, parameterization for this. So what we notice is that um, depending on the value of z, that determines the radius of the circle that you see, right? So looking at this, if we're in cylindrical, x squared plus y squared is r squared. So we have this equation um, r squared plus z squared over 4 equals 1. So we can determine the radius from the value of z because the radius is going to be the square, let's see, the radius, the radius squared is going to be 1 minus z squared over 4. So the radius is going to be the square root of 1 minus z squared over 4. So with that, when we remember the equations for spherical, which, which are that x is r cosine theta and y is r sine theta and z is just z, well, we can replace the r here and we find that x is the square root of 1 minus z squared over 4 times the cosine of theta and y is the square root of 1 minus z squared over 4 times the sine of theta and z is still z. So we get our parameterization here. These are our three, three equations. And now we just need bounds on z. Let's see. Um, if x and the, the lowest z can get is when x and y are both 0, right, right on the z-axis. And when they're both 0, we have z squared over 4 equals 1. That means the lowest that z can get is 2. So z has to go from negative 2. The highest it can get is 2. And in order to look all the way around once, then theta would have to do at least from 0 to 2 pi. And that's a parameterization where we had switched x and y. So if we want to get a parameterization of this ellipsis on its side, well, let's just change the roles of x and y. So we still have x equals the, the square root of 1 minus, oops, not z anymore. Now it's going to be y, y squared over 4 times the cosine of theta. And uh, now y is y, right? And z, z is the square root of 1 minus y squared over 4 times the sine of theta. If you look at what I've done here, I've just, everywhere there was um, a y in this parameterization, I replaced it with a z. And everywhere there was a z, there is now a y. So, and then we have our bounds on y, y from negative 2 to 2, and same bounds on theta, theta from 0 to 2 pi. So this is our, this is our parameterization. Let's go ahead and look at it in maple and see what we get. So we're going to 
um, use plot 3D and our surface is going to be, let's see, the square root of 1 minus y squared over 4 um, times the cosine of theta comma the square root, let's see, y comma the square root of 1 minus y squared over 4 times the sine of theta. Those are our three equations, right? Now we just need to put bounds on our parameters. Y goes from negative 2 to 2, and theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so we put up our, hmm, why is there a hole in our cylinder here? I wonder if I type something wrong. Y goes from negative 2 to 2. I missed a point here. I could try pushing this a little bit further. It's a numerical problem. Oh, I wonder. Okay, this fixed it. I changed the upper bound to um, 1.999. Apparently, it was having a little bit of numerical trouble when it was hitting 2. So, But uh, now we've got the the ellipsoid parameterized and it closed up pretty nicely. Let's look at one more example. This time we have ellipse, an ellipse but it doesn't have any symmetry around the um, around any any particular axis, right? Because it's stretched different amounts in all three directions. So we, we don't have the symmetry that we had in the last problem. But what we could do is remember what the parameterization would look like if it was a simple sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 1. And think about spherical coordinates. Remember in spherical coordinates, um, x is rho um, sine phi cosine theta, and y is rho sine phi sine theta, and z is rho cosine phi. So for the simpler sphere, um, this says the distance from the origin is always 1, right? So a way to characterize this in spherical is that rho equals 1. So we get this parameterization. Sine phi cosine theta, sine phi sine theta, and cosine phi. That would be great if we didn't have any numbers underneath these, right? Notice that these have the property, if you take x squared plus y squared, then you're going to get sine squared phi cosine squared phi and sine squared phi sine squared, sine, oh sorry, sine squared cosine squared theta, sine squared phi cosine squared theta, sine squared phi sine squared theta, so x squared plus y squared is going to be sine squared phi, z squared is cosine squared phi, so x squared plus y squared plus z squared will be sine squared phi plus cosine squared phi, that's going to be 1. So this, these have the property that if you square each of these and add them up, you get 1. So here's our idea. We need to be able to square and divide by 9, and square and divide by 4, and square and divide by 25, add up and get 1. So why don't we adapt this slightly? Since there's um, a 9 under here, I'm going to make this 3 sine phi and 2 and um, 5. That way, x squared over 9 will be sine squared phi cosine squared theta. y squared over 4 will be sine squared phi sine squared theta. And z squared over 25 will be cosine squared phi. So they'll add up to give 1 again. So basically, I just kind of gave them a little, I, I built on the parameterization of a, of a simple sphere to get the parameterization of this ellipsoid. Now, for, this, for the sphere, we would have just used these bounds for phi, right? Phi from 0 to pi and theta from 0 to 2 pi. And that will cover, that will give us a parameterization of this ellipsoid. Let's do that in Maple just so we can visualize how our equations are working here. So we have I'm going to plot 3D and we have 3 times sine phi times cosine theta and 2 times the sine of phi times the sine of theta. That's my y equation. And my z equation 
is 5 times the cosine of phi. And we want uh, phi to go from 0 to pi. And we want theta to go from 0 to 2 pi. And there we got it. Okay. And that parameterizes our ellipsoid. Now, what's happened here is Maple has rescaled it so that um, it will fit in a nice square window. So what we could do is we could um, choose the projection and then have it be constrained scaling. Now we can see, let me put some axes on here. Now you can see that it's that um, it's stretched by, um, so it's uh, from negative 5 to 5 in the z direction. That's because there was 25 underneath the z, right? Stretched from negative 2 to 2 in the, what direction was that? The, the y direction, right? And then in the x direction, it's stretched from negative 3 to 3. So when we do this, when we constrain the scaling, then we can see the actual football shape of this. So this, this, is a, this drew a very good picture of our ellipsoid because we had a nice parameterization. Or if you tried to graph it as a function, you'd have to solve for one variable as a function of the other. So there would be a plus or minus. So like let's say you solve for z, you'd have to graph that, the upper half and the lower half and put those two together with a display command. Um, but the problem is where the surface is changing very rapidly, um, then you sort of miss pieces of the surface. So this is a really nice way to get this plotted is to parameterize it.